Okay, here's the latest in my patches on the fly series. This one's looking at noise. Plenty of people asked me to do something on noise. And to be honest, I did wonder what you could do. Um, you know, how can we make a whole video on it? And it turns out I make about 40 different sounds in 20 minutes. So there is a fair amount you can do. I start off using noise as a modulation source and you get nice lo-fi sort of dusty, fuzzy little sounds using that. Uh, I then look at the typical percussive sounds that you get from it, say claps, hi-hats, snares, toms, loads of toms actually from like 80s sound in Simmons kit, disco kits, and also deep house, really rumbly, progressive little rumbles, as it were. But do be prepared for a lot of dish, 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 because it takes a while to, to lock some of those sounds in. But there's loads in there. Uh, and little things like how to enhance the sound and bring a little bit of the transient out just by adding a little bit of noise. So loads in here. Um, so sit back and relax uh, with 20 minutes of noise. Here we are then with my 2016 Mini Moog reissue. It's not quite vintage. It's only eight years old. Um, we're going to look at noise today. And I thought we'd start off by looking at noise as a modulation source rather than noise as the, as the oscillator, just because it's quite interesting, I think. So start off trying to make a kick drum sound. So... We will go down to a triangle. Quite nice. Let's just take a little bit of the click off. So I'm going to go for that 808 kick style sound. So we need to modulate the frequency of oscillator one. And we do that here using filter envelope generator. So let's put the modulation mix onto filter envelope generator and turn the modulation up. And then we've got a switch modulation on. Sounds a bit more like a, a kick, doesn't it? And now we're going to add noise. We're going to put filter modulation on and we're going to add some noise to the blend of modulation sources. And then if we bring the cut off down, you can hear that. It sounds almost like you're hitting the kick drum and you can hear the snare rattling. Fuzzy, it sounds like you got dust on your needle. And it sounds different to just adding noise there. So let's take the noise out of the mix there. That's a different sort of thing. We'll look at that later, but this is really nice. I do this a lot on the DFAM actually. It's got a really nice vintage vibe to it. But we don't have to just use that on basses, obviously. Let's whack it up a couple of octaves. Bring a second oscillator in. Take the um, take the envelope generator off the frequency of the oscillators. It just again gives a really nice vintage vibe, doesn't it? I'm using percussive sounds here, but obviously this works really nice on pads. You can't do pads on this, but I'm trying my best using two notes. Let's bring in a third oscillator, maybe. Sounds a little bit distorted. It sounds like it's coming out of an old AM radio. But that's noise modulation of the filter. I just think it's really nice. And you can, of course, use noise to modulate the frequency of the oscillators as well. Let's try that. Bring that on, turn this off. So, so now we're not modulating the filter, we're modulating the frequency of all of those three oscillators. <laughs> A slightly different low fi vibe. It doesn't have those little crackles, it's a bit duller because it goes through the filter afterwards. So 
So try that on tones, on pads. This could be an electric piano, maybe. Although it doesn't really sound like an electric piano here. Something to play with anyway. But let's move to the oscillator. Let's take that modulation off. Take the modulation off there, just so I don't get myself confused and listen to the noise on its own. So only listening to noise now, let's turn the filter all the way up. That's what we know as noise. There's different types of noise. There's white noise, there's pink noise on this. It's got a different harmonic content. You've got brown noise as well. I think you've got purple noise. It's like they've been through different filters. It just gives you different textures, different types of noise to use, but we'll stick it on white for today. So that's obviously your standard big noisy sweep. Add some delay, add some reverb, phaser, flanger. But to automate that using the envelopes, we will add some filter envelope to that. So you want some delay. The decay on this is also the release because we've got the release switched on down here. So think of it as ADSR. So do the same down there. Trying to get the levels about right. Big build, big build, big build, big builds, all your snares then. Or if you want those tones in there while you're doing your big builds, add some attack. A bit more. And now you got the C. <laughs> but if you're using a soft synth or you can modulate this or automate it via your door, you can draw in this cutoff and you can get it perfectly synced with your builds and your drops. But if you bring in noise as a modulation source onto that as well, let's just turn this down a bit. So bring that back in. Noise, turn it up. Let's turn that down. We've got sort of fire, haven't we? It's really weird. And that can be, actually I've used something like this when I did a remake of Robert Miles' Children on the Mod Wave as the Thunder. So if we automate that again with the envelopes, cut off down, mount a contour up. Thunder. And lightning. <laughs> and then adding some resonance to that, we get these sort of little babbling brook type sounds. Set the contour off. Well, you also get scary woodland as well. I wouldn't be going out there this time of night. Um, let's have, let's try and find that babbling brook thing again. There you go, babbling brook-ish. <laughs> Or a fire. But I think that'll do us for the sound effects for now. If we take that modulation off, let me just drop this down a little. We're getting those little resonant shots. These are very Juno style tones. If we track the filter with the keyboard, this is how you do it here. This is so 100% tracking. A nice little resonant percussion sound. If we add an oscillator to that, put it back on a triangle, it's quite nice. You get like a noisy little arpeggiator. If we use the filter like you would on a sort of standard synth tone.
just gives a little bit of extra fizz to those arpeggios. <laughs> Let's try and pay, play an arpeggio, shall we? Yeah, it just gives a little vintage tone. But also while we're here, actually, let's just drop that down an octave. So we've got your sort of standard synth bass. And adding noise to this helps it cut through the mix. Don't need too much. Let's add an extra oscillator into that. Let's try it with a square. Nice and crisp and clean. Just seems to brighten it up a bit, doesn't it? And it does cut through a mix, believe me. Let's chuck this one in as well. Bring it in. Yep, nice. And then, of course, you can open it up. Same as just doing the build, but you're doing the build inside the actual tone. Really nice for builds as well. And actually, if we turn these oscillators off, we get a sort of clap tone. Well, this basically is an analog clap. And you can do really nice builds with this. Stefan Bodson does something in Singularity where he plays something like this underneath the toms and as he's getting towards the builds. Bubbles underneath, builds up and explodes. Definitely something to experiment with. Anyway, so that's your clap. We can turn that into a hi-hat if we just make it a bit shorter. I'm gonna use the resonance here as almost like a high-pass filter. I did start this off using the Arp Odyssey because it's got a high-pass filter, but I can get more better sounds or yeah, more better sounds from this because it's got the triangles from these percussive sounds anyway. And if we get that to just coming onto self oscillation. There you go. hi-hats and you can obviously adjust the amount of metallic tone in there we can make it even more complex by bringing in some oscillators let's bring these nice and high I'm trying to make like a metallic little ding as it were listen to one at a time bring this down that's better make sure the sustains down I didn't notice it then then add another oscillator make it a bit more complex again just make it a bit more in harmonic make it a bit more metallic and just to show you if we bring pink noise in instead so you're still getting those metallics coming through nice and bright, but you've filtered the noise down a bit. Now, as we've got the oscillators on, let's try and turn that into a tom. So. Bring it 
bring it back to a triangle, modulate the frequency with the filter envelope generator again, Disco tones. So that's oscillator one being modulated by the filter envelope generator. Again, depending on what synth you've got, you will be able to do that. Then just add noise. You get noisy tones. Let's play with the filter. Turn that down. That's better. Use the pink noise again, maybe here. And then make it more of a big fat tom by adding another oscillator. Let's hear what it sounds like an octave lower. That's nice. So let's bring this one in as well, down there somewhere, second oscillator. So like, almost like two toms playing. That's good. Gives you that sort of housey vibe. Yeah, nice. Try and bring some noise into this as well, as in noise modulation. Sounds a bit broken there. That's nicer. And we bring the envelope just a bit shorter there. You get like this really nice sort of, just like a sort of almost weird percussive tom hit, but not really a tom. Really nice deep house style thing. Add some contour into that, just have a play with the, the harmonics within the tone itself. And I know I'm using the triangle here, but we can use other wave shapes. The shark's tooth is quite nice. It takes out a few more of the uh, of the lower frequencies. Look back in, and then you get really tough if you go to a pulse. Still works though. If you take the noise out, that's almost the same. So there's a difference between white and pink. The white's popping through a lot more there. But I quite like it with the pink on the toms. But let's move that now from a tom to a snare. So we'll just listen to the noise and a single oscillator for now. Okay, let's listen to just the oscillator on its own. And we want something similar to we had with the kick drum here, so that's okay. But we want it shorter. Because you've got the skin of the tom and you've also got the snare, so you bring the snare rattle in. So there we're getting snares. Let's just change the release. Add less body, more snare. And of course the snare's got two skins, one on the top and one on the bottom. So let's add a second. 
bring that in and detune it a bit. Where are we? Just makes it a little bit more of a complex tone. Or you can tune it higher. But I think round here is about right, isn't it? Change the wave on that to a pulse just to see. Going a bit Tommy there, so Toms are longer than snares. Then if we drop the filter on that, we're getting those sort of toms again though, but it's like a percussive melodic tone. Let's take that envelope off oscillator one. Make that a bit shorter. Again, now we're just moving into a little percussive, sort of melodic tones. Let's put that onto noise there. Or maybe just uh, modulate the filter. Just nice if we took all the noise out of that. Modulation down here. So that's no noise in the oscillator. And just a bit of weird crackle. Back to that dust. Yeah, so overall, percussive sounds, keep them nice and short, um, play around with the amount of noise that you get in them. But what's really interesting, I think, about noise is that you can create these really vintage style, this not distorted, but sound a bit distorted, crackly, vintage, lo-fi sounds. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please think about subscribing, ring the bell, join me over on Patreon. This channel is funded by my wonderful patrons and YouTube ads. So pop over to patreon.com slash Starsky Car and for the price of an espresso macchiato or whatever, per month you get access to samples, patches and all sorts of things. And also do take a look at my Starsky Car website as well. Again, there's patches, there's samples, there's things you can buy. It's nice if you pick up some of the things you can buy. There is some free stuff as well, but everything you can do really does help to support the channel. Thank you very much. And I will, well, give me some comments on what you'd like to see next time. And I will see you next time. And thanks for staying to the very end. Cheers.